My hands were dripping with blood. It was my first day in gymnastics class, but my gym was our family's front yard and one tree. And like any aspiring athlete, I had a dream that I could be an Olympic gymnast. I'd proudly run to my mom and show her my torn, bloody hands, because torn hands were a sign of a true gymnast. And I was a pretty distracted little kid. Nothing could quite capture my attention the way that gymnastics could. Sport has a way of capturing children. It takes mental, physical, and emotional energy. The energy and drive that I put forth to a worthy challenge has been a lesson that has served me my entire life. I remember the first day I walked onto the blue carpeted gym floor in my new pink flowered spandex gym suit, ready to show the world my newly mastered moves and feeling overwhelmed by the opportunity. My love and skill for gymnastics quickly developed, but over time, love, I learned, was hard work. I was going to gymnastics more than I was going to school, and the injuries were reality. Lucky for me, I had extremely supportive parents that would often say, you can be anything you want to be, and I believed them. But in the world of sport, mom and dad, you gotta have the dollars if you wanna play the game. We're talking about what it means to have, and in this country, there are thousands of athletes with similar stories that do not have the dollars or the support to make their dream a reality. These are what I call the forgotten athletes, the athletes that are just below the line but have the potential, passion, and true grit to see their dream through. But more than just being overlooked or under-supported, they're not seen or heard. And I think we ought to do something about it. Because beyond the mental and physical benefit that sport provides us, sport can unite a country and it has the power to change a world. It impacts how we, and more importantly our youth, define goals and values. Think back to when we watched the Vancouver Games and how we all rallied for the same cause. Or take Elijah Porter, a little boy from a little island at the end of Canada called Newfoundland. A little boy that was so inspired, he sent the only medal he had ever won to the men's relay team after they were denied an Olympic bronze. Elijah even promised that if he grows up and gets rich, he'd donate money to Canadian Olympians in the future. But Elijah, there's a problem, because in this country, there's a gap between our expectations and reality when it comes to amateur sport. We tell these romanticized stories of these top-tier wonderful athletes, but when the lights of the Olympic Games turn off. The vast majority of these athletes are left unsupported, except for small amounts of support from Sport Canada. And our corporations? <laughs> well, they sponsor the most marketable or successful athletes, or cherry-pick programs meant to introduce sport to youth. And while these programs are fantastic, there's a major gap in funding between the introduction of sport and elite amateur sport. And so, the only athletes that can currently pursue their sport full-time are the ones at the top of the podium. Forget about the ones who are competing, making finals. The ones who come in fourth, forget it. They still have to find a way to fund their career. How many people who are at the peak of their career have to find another way to fund their career? We're talking about people that are trying to be the best in the world. Imagine if our top doctors or CEOs or lawyers had to take a 10-hour shift at Tim Hortons to fund their sport. So what does it mean? It means Bianca Paquin, a 14-year-old boxer from Halifax, Nova Scotia, has a world champion title, but is funded by mom and dad. It means we run the risk that only the wealthy can afford to partake in amateur sport. And there are three things you need to know about amateur athletes. The first is, a lack of a little bit of funding massively disadvantages them. On average, a competitive athlete spends $40,000 a year to live and train, and $2,000 was the difference between Bianca making nationals or not. The second thing you need to know is that the impact that these athletes have on our country is real. When we watch the women's soccer team performance at the Summer Olympics, I guarantee you that inspired more young girls to get active to get into sport and play soccer than ever before. 
And the third thing you need to know is that the stories of these athletes that are just below the line, the ones that we never see on TV, their stories can inspire anyone. They're heartbreaking and courageous, but they need help telling them. And is it realistic to think that our government bodies have the capacity to tell the stories or fund all of the athletes that have potential in this country? Probably not. But we can help, and I want to show you how. I work in web, and we, we build websites for companies around the world. My business partner, Julia Rivard, is a former Olympic paddler. Julia is hands down the hardest working person I know, and I'm convinced that had she more time, she would have been at the top of the podium. But Julia felt the pressure of bringing in money for her family and retired from sport early. <laughs> so you know where this is going. <laughs> Julia and I sat down on a Monday night over a bottle of wine and came up with the idea to merge technology with the potential of athletes. The goal, tell the stories of athletes that are overlooked, under-supported, and are not seen or heard. Now, Julie and I are both former athletes, so we get it. We understand the struggle that these athletes face, but we're not the ones we need to convince. The reality is, we need athletes. We need the stories of sport heroes to, to instill good in our lives. Imagine a world without Christine Sinclair, Terry Fox, or Donovan Bailey. <laughs> what a great country we live in. In its original organic form, the connection between the crowd and the athlete was a simple matter of community affirmation, and by extension, our self-affirmation. Players were our neighbors or friends. And so with this in mind, we took the online technology of today to expand the reach of good old-fashioned neighborhood door knocking. You know, when you or your kid or someone you knew stood at the liquor store or went door to door selling chocolate bars to raise money for the team. And this was the inspiration for the nonprofit we created called Pursue It. Pursue It is a crowdfunding website for amateur athletes. It's a collection of athlete stories from across the country, each with a personal video and call for support. Athletes create personal givebacks as a way to say thank you to their fans for their contribution. So Bianca, the boxer, for example, wrote a handwritten thank you letter and a signed bandana to anybody that donated $100 or more. On top of putting together these campaigns, athletes have to work hard to get their stories out there into the community and beyond. Crowdfunding is a collective effort of people from around the world to support a cause via the internet. There's an athlete, campaign owner, an ask through an open call, and the crowd, it's you. We launched Pursue It in October with five athletes from across Canada. To date, we've had 15 athletes on the platform, and together we've raised $120,000 to help make their dreams a reality. Thank you. <laughs> and being an athlete on Pursuit is tough, and yet it's working. And now athletes that couldn't find funding before are finding that ordinary Canadians are joining their team and are donating as little as ten dollars to $1,000. One of my favorite successes from Pursue It is of Maxime Bouchard, a diver from Montreal. Maxime's campaign reached as far as MTV UK and Olympic diver Tom Daly, where the call to action on Twitter was, hot diver wants you to support another hot diver. <laughs> Maxime's reached his goal in 60 days, and it was $12,000, and thousands of people from around the world shared his story. The one thing I've learned from creating Pursue It is that these athletes have incredible stories and they can't go untold. The great mistake we can make is to imagine the outcome for them is winning gold. And while it's the goal that drives them, it's the journey that counts. Because we know sport teaches us about hard work, courage, and perseverance. Anyone who has ever lived for sport or has a child that's in hockey, soccer, basketball, rowing, knows what I'm talking about. We want to give these athletes a chance to go further in their sport. If we leave a story of aspiring athletes behind closed doors, or we encourage them to pursue anything less than their dream, we may never realize our potential as a nation. 
But I think this altruistic thing can work. I think we can stand behind an athlete with no status and a small window of op op er, opportunity, and we can help make their dream a reality. I think we can live up to the words of a little Newfoundland boy, Elijah, who wrote in his letter, we are Canadians, we persevere, we create better lives for each other. So please, find an athlete in your own backyard and tell them there's a way we can fund their dream and that you are going to support them.